This podcast interview is amazing. It's about why you as a mom, whether you're a Christian, whether you came out of the new age, whether you're just curious about health, holistic health, why it is so important that you stay away from the many, 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 many practitioners, functional medicine practitioners, doctors, chiropractors who are influenced by the new age. Leah Blunden was such a practitioner. She used to struggle a lot with anxiety. She's an ex-yoga practitioner and she even practiced Christian yoga at some point until the demonic influence and the portals that she opened by doing that forced her to close down and burn everything and start from scratch. In this podcast episode, she's going to share why this knowledge is so important for you to stay pure, stay clean and stay biblical when it comes to holistic health and healing and why there's such an infiltration in that field. Let me just start off with one of the most incredible things that Leah shared. Exposed facts about how the biohacking community, the vegan vegan community, the yoga community and the one world religion is part of an elite agenda, a dark agenda that some of you might have been wondering about and and working against when it came to the pandemic, but now is showing up hidden under the surface, designed to do exactly the same. And you think you're doing something great for your health while you're actually participating in something very destructive, massively interesting. Leah's going to share the favorite antioxidant that she used to her child that had autism symptoms and now has no, no, none of those symptoms, a specific way of drinking water, very surprising probably to you. And then she's going to talk about the demonic influence on the diet culture and why you must stay away from diets like a carnivore diet or a vegan diet because it is inverted wisdom. So the enemy is using God's wisdom for health to infiltrate and destroy and lie and kill. In this podcast, we cover the amazing mind-blowing link between science and God's instruction in the Bible about what foods we cannot eat because they are unclean. Then she's going to share some truths about copper toxicity, anxiety, and diets, plus supplements, and what you need to be super aware of because it also affects your hormonal health. Estrogen levels are really important in that whole puzzle piece. So this is a podcast interview that I've been excited about for so long now. I'm so, so thrilled, so honored to have you on, Leah Blondin. And before we let you tell your incredible story, I want you to answer a question for me as a a practitioner. And we'll talk about how actually amazing a practitioner you are, but also different to most practitioners out there. If I ask you, a couple of weeks ago, I said, I think there's going to be a huge demand for a new age-free community of practitioners and doctors, chiropractors, because it's almost impossible to find. I asked that question in Facebook, what do you people think? And there was a huge outrage. So Mm -hmm. when I ask you, why is that so difficult to find a practitioner, a doctor, a chiropractor who's not infiltrated by new age? And what is up with this dark influence in a scientific field? Yeah. So that, those are really great questions. Um, I think people are scared to put themselves out there. You know, me putting out a video that says I'm quitting my yoga career and selling my yoga studio and I'm quitting meditation for good was not an easy thing. That was really hard. I lost literally all my friends. Um, a lot of my family were just like, Leah's gone crazy, crazy Christian over here. Um, she's not working out like she was before what's going on. And that was really, really, really hard on me personally. Um, 
because I lost all of my support system. So I think that is a really big reason why people stay safe where they are in, in their comfort zone, because you don't have the world coming at you saying um, all of those things and, and looking at you differently, which is what the Bible says. We as Christians, we, were, we will be persecuted for that way. And we have to stand for, for that truth and what we believe in, but it's not easy. <laughs> So I think that is one aspect of um, people are not doctors, you know, they're, they're not openly sharing their, their religious beliefs when you go in for a 10 minute consult, you know, that's just not part of it. So I think that's where uh, we're shifting is, you know, with social media and these doctors now have their own more professional websites instead of just being listed on your, the health insurance website, there is their name and picture, um, and people can be more vulnerable in that way. So I think that's kind of a big problem. Um, probably the main problem there. And then the, your second question was the demonic influence on uh, the dark influence. So you are, tell, tell us your profession, your education. And then when you are answering this question about the dark influence, what have you observed in the holistic health field as a professional practitioner with this darkness creeping in and, and right now being exposed? It's like a war room. We're doing a catch up game. We just, we just talked about before we went live. It's exhausting for people to discern what's dark and what's actually light. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of three questions in one. Just let me, just tell me if it's too much in in one pile of questions, but what would you say? <laughs> what would you say? Sure. Well, my background, first of all, is I owned a yoga studio for four years. I was practicing um, since I was 13 is when I got into yoga. So I saw, and I, I got into it because I was very anxious and I became very depressed around puberty. So at age 13, and now looking back biochemically, I know what was going on and what I could have done um, very simply, non-new age wise to do to support myself in that season. Um, but I turned to yoga um, and I thought it was helping there. So obviously those big mainstream practices are one major way that darkness is infiltrating the health space because many practitioners are teaching holy yoga. You know, I've been to those classes before. It's just, and that's kind of the entire point of the new age and of the, the government's kind of plan program. Um, I've actually, Celeste Solemn has done some really great um, military type videos. Um, she used to work for FEMA and she had this video where it list, literally listed yoga in the new age as part of the government's plan to start merging all of this together. And then soon after that, I think the, the Pope came out with his new center, the Chris, Chris center, it's Christians and Islams and one other Hindus. They all come together into the same church as what they've been creating. So that's kind of the plan is just to kind of make everybody the same, everything the same. It's all just, it's all okay. It's all, you know, just like they've done with every, the LGBTQ, the, all of those different, um, controversial growths that have happened in the past couple decades or so. They're just trying to like even the playing field and just make it all the same. So no matter if you're Christian, no matter if you're a practicing Satanist, like, oh, these are all just fine. Just like we all go to the doctor. Oh, ev everybody can just go to the doctor, but what are the doctors pushing? What is the mainstream medicine pushing? They're pushing biological products that break down your DNA and dispose of your genetic bloodline, which is kind of going back. That's the whole point of Satan's plan is to crack us all in that way. And um, so it's really, it's, it's everywhere, unfortunately. Um, but that's, that's to say that um, Satan only copies what God has created and is not creating anything that's new. So I think that's really hopeful to, you know, be able to hone ourselves back in and ask those questions. Okay, well, why did my doctor recommend that? Why is this another huge major trend that's going on? And, and saying, is that for me? Um, 
and, and praying about it and using as much discernment as you can on it and asking others for help who have been there before. Um, because coming from uh, the yoga perspective, my recommendations are going to be much different than um, somebody who is currently practicing as a yoga instructor, right? So making sure that you are seeking wise advice from people who have been in the places that you don't want to be <laughs> and the places yeah. that you do want to go and, and then saying, well, you know, that's, that's not for me and I'm okay with that. So again, going back to being okay and knowing yourself and knowing your connection to the Holy Spirit that you can say no and people are going to look at you funny and think you have 10 heads and you're crazy but that's okay because at least your your soul is not being damaged and your spirit is whole and um ultimately you'll be okay then yeah and that affects your health as well talk to us a bit about your education and um how that began for you because you have an interesting story you you did deal with a lot of anxiety and we're going to talk about the biochemical aspects the the the, the copper methylation pyrrole disorder aspects to mental health and mental illness so your story and your profession what's your title sure um, my title is Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Practitioner, which is a handful. So we just say FDN. I'm an FDNP. And um, that is essentially, I just work on a subclinical level. So doctors are here. They're working at a clinical level to diagnose and treat. And then you have a subclinical level. And we are not looking to diagnose or treat anything. We are just looking to analyze dysfunctional patterns in the body. So essentially, we're just looking for hidden stressors, right? We know that there's all these external stressors, but we also have internal stressors. And that is the missing link and the missing piece, I think, to people's health from the non-New Age standpoint, because the New Age standpoint says, oh, yeah, we do. We have all these things going on inside and we need to manipulate them. Um, yeah, kind of. But actually, like it's the it's the biochemical stuff that is triggering certain things that needs to be understood and controlled and supported um, in very specific ways. So um, I just run functional lab testing on, we look at the entire body as a whole, and then we come up with a very specific and um, precise protocol based off you and how unique you are. Because yes, we all need the same vitamins and minerals and amino acids to function. Like that's literally how God designed us, but they're not all the same. One person's copper could be up here and another person's copper could be way down here. Um, or one person's copper is, is high, but it's not getting inside the cell or it's too much inside the cell, but not, not enough in the serum. Or, you know, there's so much nuance to what these different biochemical aspects could be doing. And we don't know what they're doing unless we know what they're doing. <laughs> so yeah. that's why I love the functional medicine testing because there's just no guessing to it. And in the new age that was, it was like, okay, let me wave my hands over you. And um, okay, yeah, let's let's focus on your head and we're gonna do more stuff over here or do, do this yoga pose and that's gonna help. And it never helped. It just made my anxiety worse. It made my depression worse. Uh, I just kind of got crazier, which, um, was some of the PubMed studies that I saw come out of Stephen Bankars about meditation causing more mental delusions in people. And I was like, oh yeah. Hmm. And then I started thinking about and asking other yoga friends, oh, well, what do you know? This person's practiced meditation for 20 years. Yeah, they're nuts. They're out of their <laughs> minds. Like, And that's kind of, I was like, okay. So that was kind of my point of where I really kind of shut down that entire world and um, I, I started to have a new perspective and a new framing system on the functional diagnostic nutrition, because I was trained in that in 2017, which I had my yoga studio at the time then. Um, and I sold that in 2019 and kind of restarted my business uh, 2021. So I, I kind of got rid of several of the perspectives that I was using when I was doing it in the studio and um, kind of changed things really just got more set on like, what is the biochemistry? Um, because that just gives us so much answers without having to go into the occultic aspects of the body. And um, so I started to really enjoy it more. And um, 
it just became very straightforward of this is the science, this is the strategy, this is X, Y, Z, there is no more guessing. And that's when people started to get much better results, like myself, you know, I had ability to do this testing when I had the yoga studio and I was okay, but I wasn't better. I wasn't fully fixed, I guess you could say. I don't know if that's ever a total thing. I'm not totally fixed, but at least I'm not struggling with depression or anxiety anymore. So I would say that is a full recovery um, from those things. So yeah, it's like there's a physical aspect and there's a spiritual aspect. And this Mm -hmm. is where it gets manipulated because the physical aspect of which we're going to talk about, there are certain overloads and imbalances that can cause anxiety depression ADHD Mm -hmm. symptoms autism symptoms uh, fertility issues pain yep and there are some spiritual aspects that can do the same and even within the biochemical dietary approach to deal with these things in the functional medicine world and in the whole holistic health field that has been hijacked by darkness as well so mm-hmm. that we are exposed to a lot of copper that causes anxiety and and, and mm-hmm. uh, actually serious illness mm-hmm. um, and there are some dietary influences that are quite interesting that seem pretty dark as well almost like it's a, a mass destruction scenario so let's talk a little bit let's dive into copper diets that are served to us as the solution but actually makes matters worse and then when we've covered that I would like to hear from you what it felt like to leave the 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 dark side of health and healing and and that whole aha moment that you had maybe we should actually start there because you you lost so much and that's what I really want to, I want to, I want people to know that it comes with a price to sit where you are at today. So mm-hmm. your darkest moments where you realized I need to change. I need to burn, burn my old self on a big, uh, in a big fire. You know, what, what happened? Well, it wasn't anything like too crazy. I was literally just laying in bed watching, uh, you know, Stephen, Stephen Bankar's videos and um, different people leaving the new age, listening to their testimonies and realizing how much of what I experienced were chains and shackles from that life. And no matter what I did in the physical, you know, balancing my hormones, balancing micronutrients and stuff, those shackles still hold on to you. So it's just me laying in bed and having this realization moment of like, oh, I still have all my yoga books. Maybe I should get rid of those. Oh, you know, I have this little idol thing from a friend that brought it back from India. Like that's when my wheels started turning and I was like, okay, maybe these things have influence over me. And, um, I got rid of them all. And I said, I'm not coming back to the, to the yoga studio. Um, so I quit teaching, I quit meditating, I quit doing all of the things that I was used to doing. And honestly, it just felt so free because I was spending hours in the morning having my practice, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing all of these things. And then I'm like, well, I just spent two hours and now I'm still really anxious. Like, great. What am I doing? Uh, So (laughs) it just, it really just dawned on me like this, this isn't, this is a waste of time. This is a um, idol practice that opens portals t- for entities to enter your body, and I don't want that anymore because I've been I've been demonically attacked physically um, and spiritually um, my whole life. I think I could remember being seven or eight and seeing seeing things, dark figures around. Um, so. Um, and terrible, terrible nightmares. Um, it was crazy. So upon leaving that world and like walking through a time of deliverance, I still like nothing, my anxiety, my depression weren't getting better. Um, I definitely felt more free because I wasn't involved in those practices. And like, so things had definitely lifted, but again, I was not in a full recovery. I was still 
being very challenged mentally to be with my children and my family and get out of bed in the mornings. And I felt like I was doing all of the, the health stuff. Um, and that's when I found William Walsh and um, the, the copper aspects and the pyrrole aspects and the methylation aspects and the micronutrient aspects and how important those are. And um, that just kind of kept snowballing into different research topics regarding the spiritual and the physical and how those merge and how those merge into mental illness a lot of the time. And I just became obsessed. <laughs> and um, so it's a full circle moment to realize all the stuff that I went through. God wanted me to own a yoga studio and go through that. So I would have this perspective and this story to tell and could, because nobody ever said, oh, hey, Leah, I had gotten baptized in 2013. And then I opened a yoga studio in 2015. So I was simultaneously reading my Bible and doing all these new age practices, which again is literally what the government wants to, to merge all of these things together. So everyone is doing them and everyone's the same. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that was, that was kind of my, my big wake up moment there. Um, and how did people react when you, when you came out as Christian? Um, well, I had started, I mean, it was, it was hard. It was, people were confused and they know, they know I had gone to church every once in a while. And I, I read my Bible. And I mean, I even talked about Jesus in my yoga classes. There was a pastor of a local church that was would come to my yoga classes and we were reading the yoga of Jesus books and like all of this stuff that just like wrapped it all into one, which is just totally wrong. And so, yeah. So they, but did you feel alone? Did you lose money? Did you lose friends? What, what happened? Um, I mean, like I said, I did lose all my friends. I think most of my family thought I was crazy. Um, which they probably still do. I mean, I'm having babies at home without meds and like already doing all this crazy stuff. So half of them were like, okay. And the other half were like, here she goes again. Um, but yeah, all of my friends, uh, I had friends that worked with me at the yoga studio teaching fitness. I had um, hundreds of clients that I was very, very close with. And literally only two people ever stuck around wow. and saw me for, you know, hey, there's, there's more to Leah than just her being a yoga teacher. And, um, I even stayed very good friends with a yoga teacher and that was very, and she's, she is now, um, has very flipped the script. And if I had lost that, uh, that relationship with her because of this one thing over here, I wouldn't have had that opportunity to, um, you know, preach to her and share with, share her. And she's the one who actually told me, well, well, yeah, Leah, it's so interesting that you left all of this because when she had worked in a Kundalini yoga studio and she's like, we watched exorcisms all the time during teacher training, the sounds that you hear coming out of the rooms, the stuff that you see that's going on is demonic. And she admitted yeah. that she was seeing demonic and she was still a yoga teacher. She was still practicing, saying that these things are happening in the yoga studio and realizing that this probably isn't really good for your soul and then when she started to stop a lot of that and she got rid of idols in her home and started doing some of those things and her life started changing um so that was really fun to see that the one one of the very last friends that I had had um you know a lot of good had come out of that so yeah I, I never got any of those friends back um and I've kind of restarted my whole life <laughs> uh, with, with new friends and new colleagues and um, a new business and a, a new heart and a new mind. Um, so everything is new in this season that I'm in, which now I'm really okay with. Um, yeah. But it was very, it was, it was debilitating for a while, especially because that was during the pandemic. So I think during the pandemic, everybody was a little frazzled and a little confused and they were questioning their reality and their existence and God and science and health yeah. and healthcare. Like, I think we all went through these big mega breakthrough moments during that time. And um, so we all were kind of alone during that season, but no yeah. one ever came back from it. You know, like a lot of people were able to restore the relationships that kind of dwindled away during the COVID time, but um, yeah, 
some of us had to just completely start over and that's essentially you know you're given a new life and uh when you come to jesus and literally he had to tear down my entire life so i could rebuild it in a way that honored the ministry and the work that i'm supposed to be doing as my life purpose um so pretty fun now to see that is so interesting because that's what i feel is such a a a promoter of this way of doing life and helping people new age free but led by the holy spirit because you obviously is not a great marketing stunt it's not a great business decision seen from the worldly perspective all of us lose all our friends businesses money safety acknowledgement and yet we know we there's there's no way around it there's either the dark way or the light way there's there's Mm -hmm. no middle ground and i think this is what scares the the health community and people are now realizing hey I went to get healthy with this dietary approach, or I went to see this chiropractor or functional medicine practitioner or doctor. I'm not getting well, and I'm actually sometimes feeling like I'm getting worse, and it does not make sense. Right. And now we're beginning to see people realizing, okay, there are some new age dark demonic influences in this field, and the people practi- pra- practicing this they don't even know. And I think that's why it's so difficult because they know they're going to lose a lot by, mm-hmm. by realizing this. Mm-hmm. So now you are, you are on the other side of this. What is it that you see when you look at mental health issues like anxiety? Let's look at that first because that's something that affects moms, children with autism and ADHD, young people, everybody anxiety, depression, ADHD, OCD, it's all over the place. So your personal story there and your approach to that. So like I said, it it really started around puberty. Um, So when my hormones started rising, problems started happening. Um, And I went the yoga route for 20 years or so, a long time. Um, And then uh, I even, I started going to church again. I started reading my Bible more. And again, nothing was changing until... I had to, I got rid of all those shackles. I left the yoga world um, and really started to dial in, look at the biochemistry. Cause that was where I was like, well, I can't look at all this airy fairy stuff over here anymore. That wasn't working. So I'm going to hyper-focus on what is going inside biochemically. And that just opened up my world. And I'd say the, probably the majority of my clients come to me. I, I ask, you know, what have you tried? That's not worked laundry list of all these different things. Many, many of them are saying, I have tried, I've tried praying, I have tried surrendering, I've tried to do um, all of the stuff the Bible says to do, and nothing's working. I still have anxiety, I still have depression, that was my story. It was like, how do all these people, you know, they make these videos, and they're like, yeah, I came to Jesus, my depression went away. I'm like, well, why, what happened to me? And I think a lot of women I've seen are getting in the cycle of like, well, I must not be good enough, I must not be praying hard enough or as much as I should, or like we start to think that there's something wrong with us and God doesn't love us because we're still sick. And I know that was the place that I was in for a while was like, well, I guess I'm just doomed. Like, I guess all my yoga stuff, you know, just the devil has too much of a hold on me. And it just, I'm just going to have to live like this. And, um, as soon as I found out the copper situation and dialed in all of the methylation and micronutrient problems, I mean, within months, like probably two months, I would say eight weeks, my husband was like, who are you? What is going on? Literally some of his last, before I really started getting serious about dialing in the the biochemistry of it, he was like, should you go get a lobotomy? Like, like you're absolutely insane. I don't know what to do anymore. We've tried so much besides the micronutrient testing and the dialing of that in. Um, So it was really hard. I mean, it was hard on our marriage and me being a parent and, you know, all my friendships. Um, So that was a really challenging aspect of it all. But as soon as I got it all dialed in and I was just like, well, where to go? Where's the anxiety? Where's the depression? I want to get out of bed early in the morning, like, and go do stuff. What is happening? And that was really strange because, um, I just didn't think it would be that easy. 
<laughs> and it was pretty so, easy once I had the right things in line and in order to get that dialed in. So Holy Spirit guided nutritional approach for you. And so, so so what's that truth about copper toxicity and pyrrole disorder and the link to mental health issues? So the pyrrole disorder is... Um, I mean, we all naturally have pyroles, but when there's a high level of, of, of stress or oxidative stress, you're going to excrete more pyroles, which um, pick up vitamin B6 and zinc, and they excrete them out of your urine more rapidly than you can utilize those nutrients. So with a deficiency in zinc, copper has a chance to become imbalanced and rise, and especially hormones. Only um, estrogen will raise copper um, and zinc is a precursor to progesterone. So again, when there's not enough zinc and too much copper and you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone and like all of these other things that spew off of that, um, the copper was really the missing link that I needed to fix all of the other underlying problems I already knew about, which was like candida and my, my, I had no menopausal levels of progesterone in my twenties, like where wow. to go, what's happening, what's going on. Um, so the, and I had done a lot of that stuff and, and supported myself to a place where I was able to have two easy pregnancies and no miscarriages or things like that, that sometimes come along with the deficiencies of progesterone and zinc and too much copper. So praise the Lord that that was all really fine and dandy. Um, and that was before I had my children before realizing the copper problem. So a lot of that was actually passed down to them, which I'm now still working on um, because my daughter had some kind of, uh, I would say she has like autism, some tendencies, um, but was never, there's no full diagnosis or anything. Um, but a lot of the mental health imbalances that come along with the, the pyrrole and the copper and the methylation. So I just started helping her in the same way I was helping myself. And she's like a whole new kid. So it's, um, it's pretty wild, honestly, how simple it is and how it's very straightforward. <laughs> and that's, that's what I really like about it. And so what and, symptoms did she have that she no longer has? She had really big problems with clothes. Like she just started wearing clothes like this past year. Um, so like any kind of sensory issues, noises, she, she would never let us sing happy birthday to her. She hated the noise. She hated the center of attention. Um, it was just really challenging to communicate with her and for her to communicate back. She was just really, I don't want to say shy, but just very like very observant and standoffish. And um, it was just, you could see that it was making her struggle with social interactions with other kids and, and things of that nature. Um, so all of those issues are gone and she can wear clothes with tags now. And it's just, um, it's, uh, her sleep was a major, major problem were sleep issues and she's sleeping through the night now on her own. So that really helps all of us feel a lot better when we're all sleeping more. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, the, the copper can be passed down, um, through the umbilical cord and through the placenta. Um, especially in those the last um, hours of pregnancy, the last days, because your copper doubles in pregnancy naturally, because copper is necessary for creating a baby. It's necessary for many functions in the body, but too much can shut down certain mechanisms like thyroid conversion and your adrenal health and your liver and how your brain works and um, all types of different things. So yeah, understanding that, understanding that my pyrroles were elevated and that I needed more, a little bit more zinc than the average person to bring all of this into balance completely changed my life. Like my husband says, I probably went from a, like on a scale of one to 10, I was at a two. I was depressed. I was in bed all day. I was grumpy and angry and raging at night. And I had no appetite. I was so, my stomach was so sick from it. That's another symptom of too much copper is lack of appetite, anorexia type things. <clears throat> and um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and postnatal depressions and even yeah. psychosis as far as I'm informed. Um, yeah. 
one of the things that I find interesting with this copper situation and the pyrrole disorder and methylation, which we're going to cover, copper is in all these beauty products for hair growth. And so some women will take these supplements and to, to look great. Vanity is one of the sins, by the way. <laughs> and not understand that the anxiety that they're feeling is linked to that. So I do believe that, and it's in the the UIDs for pregnancy prevention, the copper, what's it called? What's it called in? Oh, the IUD. Yeah. IUD, yes. Mm -hmm. It's in that, it's in birth control pills. It's right. in a lot of multivitamins, which people also just take. Mm -hmm. So there, even within the mainstream and the holistic field, copper is being introduced which can cause severe mental health issues so we are seeing this increase in that um and so that it's really important to find a new age free and a really informed practitioner so thank god for you and then with the pyrrole disorder i want to hear your story about that and your symptoms pyrrole disorder is also a genetic a genetic condition but it's also really prevalent in high stress communities like um chinese communities or what's hong kong for example okay. and so i'm thinking maybe there's a demonic influence there where the whole slave mentality over performance keeping on keeping us in that egyptian slave land basically is also part of that whole problem. And methylation is de determined in the first days of pregnancy due to epigenetic insults, which is caused by the toxic environment that we live in. So many of the things are that whole dark world influencing our bodies that then influence mental health. So mm -hmm. tell us a bit more about your, your pyral, um, the, the, the spiritual part of the pyral disorder journey for you and methylation as well when it comes to people that you help and how you help yourself and your family. Yeah, that's a really curious, I haven't thought about that as like this slave mentality, um, but that's essentially what we're in, especially here in the US. It is just go, go, go. What, you only see your kids two hours a day because they're so busy too with sports and school and all this stuff. And like, Clearly people are sicker than ever because they're not stopping. They're not listening to what's going on inside their bodies. They're not taking good care of themselves. And I think that, I think when you're not well, you cannot live out God's purpose for your life, or it's harder for you to live out God's purpose for your life. If I'm sick in bed all day, am I excited to meet with clients and, and look at their lab work and help them get better? No, because I'm sick in bed. <laughs> like, so that's not helping anybody to stay in that place. Um, I, I'm, I wonder, I don't know specifically if there's any spiritual components to the pyral problem, but, um, usually in my practice, the pyral issue is not, it's not the main thing. That's kind of just like a byproduct of all of the other issues that are going on. Those internal stressors or external stressors can cause that to elevate and for you to waste those nutrients. Um, same thing with other nutrients too. It's not just pyrroles and B6 and zinc, but magnesium is, is excreted heavily under stress. So there's all of, all of those things, the antioxidants, um, you know, in times of stress, you really need to increase your antioxidant load. Um, which, which ones are your favorites for that? Antioxidant wise. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite right now, uh, we have a hydrogen water machine that has molecular hydrogen. And I think that is the most fascinating antioxidant I've ever looked at or studied, um, because a lot of the antioxidants, glutathione, you know, vitamin E, those types of things, those can get overloaded just like every, just like copper, just like zinc, just like all of these other things, too much of a good thing is still too much of a good thing Yeah. until you look at molecular hydrogen because you cannot get too much molecular hydrogen. And it is the only antioxidant that not only gets into the cells, but it's small enough to get into the mitochondria, which is where free radicals are created is within your mitochondria and free radicals cause oxidative damage. So if you can get rid of the free radicals at the source of creation and overall have less inflammation and less oxidative stress, 
that is going to support all your micronutrients. That is going to support your hormones. That's going to support your gut. That's going to support your brain. That is going to support every single system in your body because you are working at like the tiniest cellular level. Um, without being able to overdo it. So it's very, very safe. I have lots of friends who have used it on their children with autism with great results externally and internally. So you can drink it or put it on your skin. Um, And it's just been, that's my favorite. That's my favorite right now. Um, But I do love glutathione is a good one too. That's uh, comes up on our micronutrient uh, panel. And I would say probably half half of the people we look at are deficient in glutathione. So, um, but really there's not one that's more important than the other. And that's, that's where I really want to come across is like, everything needs to be in balance micronutrient wise, food wise. We can't just go carnivore or just do the opposite and just do vegetarian because those are very two extremes that are going to make you sick long-term. So we need to find that balance in the middle And, and that's where all of these, I think we cause most of our own problems. We cause our own anxiety. We cause our own depression problems because, uh, if you're drinking alcohol and then you're depleting your B vitamins and that can cause depression or you're decided to take beef liver because everyone says it's great. And now you have too much copper and now you have too much anxiety because your adrenaline is through the roof. Like a lot of times we cause our own problems because things can become too much. Um, when we overdo them, but, and most people don't know when they're overdoing them because they don't have any data on their body to say, well, where is my iron? Where is my zinc? Where is my copper? I have no idea. So that's not really the time to just blindly take things that you have no idea what their physiological properties are. Um, Same with herbs. I just had a client yesterday. She's like, oh, I think I'm going to try this herb for my anxiety. And I was like, well, that herb actually has phytoestrogenic effects, which means it can raise your estrogen and testosterone. We don't have your hormone panel back yet. We don't know if that's how we want to affect those hormones. So no, please don't go buy a random herbal supplement and start taking it because other people said it's good for anxiety because it might not be good for you because you are unique and you are different. Um, So that goes for all the testing that goes for all of the supplements, all of the food recommendations is that someone needs to take a look at it for you and figure out what's best for you in this season. That's not necessary to say that's what you're going to need 10 years from now, but right now where you are, this is what's, what's going to be great for you. Oh, that's so exciting. Can you talk a little bit more about these extreme diets and how you see that as an inversion of how we are actually taught and designed to eat by God. And I, I really would love for you to touch on the beef liver a little bit more, these hyped uh, superfoods that we see everywhere. So the, the, the carnivore, the vegan diets, from your perspective, spiritually and physiologically, what's up? I think overall, the, the idea is we need to eat seasonally. We need to eat locally. We need to eat in moderation. That is what every time there is a meal, in the Bible, that is what they're doing. They are not shipping in something from somewhere else and eating that. So I think that's a big problem that people are not looking at who they are genetically, where they come from ethnically. And I like to give the um, example of like a nutrition plan for a Pacific Islander, someone who's grown up and their family history is long-term in Hawaii. They're going to eat a lot of fish. They're going to eat a lot of carbs, um, vegetables, fruits, because that's what grows in the area. But if you take somebody who's an Inuit from the Alaska region and you put them in Hawaii and they eat that way, they're going to get really fat. They're going to not, their brain's not going to work. They're not going to feel good. They're not going to have energy. They need more protein and fat because that's what they are used to up in Alaska. They're, they're hunting animals that are, have very high fat contents. And that is what is going to be metabolically best for them to have an optimal weight, to have optimal energy, and all of those those things that everybody is desiring from a diet plan. Really, you just need to look at what you need to be nourishing yourself with nutritionally, and diet should be completely out. Diets are not a thing anymore in my world. I don't say that word. I say, how are you nourishing yourself? Yeah. And, you know, are you getting enough? Are you getting enough of the right things for you? And again, most of us are causing our own problems by, oh, well, I'm not eating much meat. Okay. Well, no wonder your copper is so high and your zinc is low because red meat is the highest source of zinc. So, and you're a fast metabolizer. You need meat to physically keep living for your engine to keep roaring. Um, 
So we take a look at all of that and figure out what that is for each person. Um, and then, so again, I think we're just doing too much, like the beef liver trend or any supplement that is just generally being recommended out there without, again, knowing or somebody understanding the data on your body is, is dangerous. Um, and then you go back and, you know, you read about the liver in the Bible and how it was used. Cause that's what everybody wants to say is, oh, ancestrally everybody ate beef liver. Yeah, but they weren't taking six pills a day as their multivitamin. They had it once in a while when the animal died and they shared it between a hundred people. So they got a small portion. So, and then the Bible says that like, uh, the liver is, <clears throat> is unclean. It says, do not eat fat or blood. The liver is one of the most fatty organs and it has the most blood running through it. Most of the times it's recommended to eat raw, which is fat and blood in raw form, yeah. which is yeah. disgusting. Um, and then, so the other things that I thought the Bible was very interesting to mention was like, um, you know, not eating pigs and not eating oysters. So yeah. every, everything that God says not to consume is some type of filter. So oysters are the filter of the ocean. Pigs are the filter of the land and the liver is the filter of your body. So same thing with parasites. Parasites love to live in oysters. They love to live in pigs and they love to live in your liver. They actually lay all their eggs inside your liver and your gallbladder. And that's how that, that's how that goes. All of those things are essentially the same, but just in different areas throughout the world. Um, so again, if we want to eliminate parasite problems, if we want to make sure we're not getting too much heavy metals. So all of those animals, those organs, um, pick up parasites, they pick up heavy metals, they pick up toxins from the oceans or from the land and they consume them and hopefully are processing them and, and getting them out. But that's, that's my theory on why those things are not recommended when you study them from like, okay, scientifically, what do these things do? What are found in these things? Oh yeah, let's not eat the liver. No wonder it has such high copper content and high iron content because the liver has sequestered those from the animal or from the human to protect their other vital organs, like their reproductive organs, much more necessary than your liver, you know, for, to create life. Um, so that's kind of how God God has designed that system is the liver is going to store. If it's not working well, it does become a storage system. We don't want it to become a storage system, which again is a big reason to dial in all of your micronutrients because those in that methylation process is 150% important to the liver functioning and to these parasite problems or heavy metal problems not happening for you. Um, so those are just a couple of my favorite uh, nutrition aspects well, that's so interesting. I mean, we could talk for hours about this. I, mm -hmm. I just want to cover a little bit about the vegan diets and this whole biohacking. I don't know if you've seen the same as I've noticed that. I, I don't know if you agree with this, but it seems like this biohacking community is getting more and more insane and more and more infiltrated by New Age and Ayahuasca and Pride and yeah. Um, so what about the vegan diet and this whole uh, extreme diet situation? Well, the vegan diet is, it goes right along with the copper problem that we're seeing. Okay, we get everybody on vegan diets, less zinc, more copper, more toxicity in their body. Okay, now we're going to level up. Okay, we're going to add yoga, the next step of that new age realm. And it just kind of keeps building. So that video that I spoke about with Celeste Solemn, uh, where it listed yoga and new age as part of literally the military, the government's plan to have control over everything. Um, biohacking, that exact word is listed also in that. It looks like a periodic table that she shows and it shows all these different things that are being used. Biohacking is in there. So what? obviously there's good aspects to it. I wear a ring that tracks my heart rate and my sleep, and I find it a very useful tool. Um, but at some point, I mean, that's exactly what we're seeing with, oh, the whole microchipping thing, which we're already, essentially we're microchipped without a microchip because of the, the land, air, and water. Um, they don't need to do an actual microchip for that. But um, that information on people's bodies is you is being used and will continue to be used to make different mm -hmm. changes in society. Um, so that's literally one of the pillars that they are using as a infiltration method 
um, to bring down society even further than, you know, where everybody is right now in an unhappy, unfulfilled, unhealthy state. Um, and vegan that's diets, is that the same from your perspective and the push of plant-based? 100%. Oh, yeah. The, the vegan, vegetarian, that is all orchestrated to fit under the new age realm and to cause more imbalances. So actually very frequently in vegetarian, vegan yoga circles, uh, like myself, I was like the poster child of this, although I wasn't vegan and vegetarian, but um, is too much copper comes from eating that way, which can cause more mental disturbances, which makes you think you need to go do more yoga and makes you think that you are connecting to this higher power because it literally makes you kind of out of your mind like literally you yeah. mentioned psychosis yeah you kind of get out of your mind which is why my husband was like do you need a lobotomy because you're you're kind of crazy you know and yeah. um so i do think that those minerals can be used in a demonic or spiritual way to bring about mental illness 100 percent leah i'm I'm a big fan. I'm so grateful for everything that you've shared. And uh, I'm sure we're going to hear much more from you and about you. I'm going to link to all the things that you've mentioned. And I just want to thank you on behalf of the autism mom community who want to find their, everyone wants to find their way in, in and out of this completely confused setting. And you've made it much more easy for us and much more clear. So thank you and God bless you and your work. You too. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. And I hope we can do it again and keep continuing that conversation. Just could you, could you mention where can people find you? Sure. Um, my, my social media, my website, everything is named the same. It is life lab wellness co.com. Yeah. Life lab wellness co.com Instagram, life lab wellness co Facebook, YouTube, all those types of things, the same name. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Hey, you. I really, I need you. <laughs> and I hope you, you liked this conversation. For me, it's so important that we get the word out there, that we get God's word out there, that we save people from getting infiltrated by bad spirits unknowingly, that we also tell the practitioners that they're being used by a hidden agenda. So if that's something you want to be part of, please share this episode. Please subscribe to this podcast and rate it, give it stars, because the more you do things like that, it really means a lot to, to getting it out there and having this podcast reach more people. This is life-saving information. And if you want the links that Leah is talking about, the amazing antioxidant hydrogen machine that she's using the links about the hijacked hidden agenda by the biohacking explosion the vegan diets the one world one church religion and how it's actually super dark and elite controlled go and check out the description and go to barefootautismwarriors.com slash podcasts with an s slash 167 for this episode also do connect with me at contact at barefootautismwarriors.com if you are really intrigued about all this and you want to turn symptoms around for either you and your child just like Leah did for her child and I did for mine who went from stimming sleepless nights screaming eloping uh, echolalia lining things up tantrums endlessly to none of those symptoms and living independently just Contact me, contact at barefootautismwarriors.com and let's try and find out what the next step might be for you. Well, I hope you're subscribed to my podcast wherever you're listening to it or to my newsletter by downloading one of my free guides under resources, podcasts or anywhere else, barefootautismwarriors.com and until next time, take care, stay holy, stay aware. See you soon.